most of you uh, uh, know that the Mark V is uh, remarkably uh, uh, durable, and uh, <laughs> we, I, I uh, was showing this quill maintenance trick to somebody in the earlier session, and they said, well, they've never had to do this in 20 years. And that's, uh, that's perhaps true, but from time to time, you may have to do some maintenance on the quill. You should, certainly should lubricate it from time to time. If you have an older machine and you suspect that it only has a single bearing in the quill, you may want to replace it with a two bearing. Um, and, and, of course, there's always the off chance that sooner or later the bearings will go out. So, in that, when that's uh, the case, you have to remove the quill from the uh, headstock, uh, uh, preserve the tension or retension the quill, and uh, uh, lubricate it, replace it, whatever, and put it back in. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. Now, if you, if you go to um, uh, scroll down on the blackboard, you'll find a, um, a little uh, thing in yellow that says click here and you can see a PDF file from our uh, maintenance uh, manual um, and you can uh, you can refer to that if you want if you right click on it you can um, you can download it and it will uh, it will uh, uh, then you can uh, keep it for reference but in the meantime I'm going to show you how to do this First of all, to remove the quill, you need a 532nd inch Allen wrench. Uh, and the first thing that you have to do is you have to loosen the Allen screw that is in the very top of the, of the headstock. Uh, now, if you've never done this before, you'll probably uh, have some acupunky that is stuffed into that screw. Why we do this, I do not know. Presumably to keep the screw from backing out, but it, it really doesn't back out uh, um, with or without it. Uh, many times people have asked me what that acupunky is, and I have absolutely no idea. It's probably a proprietary formula like uh, Bush's Baked Beans, only uh, more sinister. Probably I have new toe of frog. We get a couple of witches in here to mix it, mix it up. But anyway, it's stuffed right down in that Allen screw, and you can pry it out with the point of a, uh, of a pocket knife. Once you do so, take your... Um, your 536 and Allen wrench, loosen that a couple of turns, and then um, just extend the quill until you feel the rack let go, and then pull the quill free. And that's all there is to it. Now, notice that I'm keeping the tension on the quill. Okay, if I if I were to let this go, it would it would uh, wind back really fast and whack me in the knuckles. So I want to keep the tension. Now, if I'm if I'm happy with my quill tension, all I do is take the stop here <clears throat> and set it past the four and one quarter mark and tighten this down, and that will prevent the uh, the tension from unwinding. If, however, I want to reset the tension. I just let this unwind slowly, okay, and then just leave it. Okay, here's the quill. Now, you, of course, don't have a, a cutout in the side of your quill like I have in mine, uh, but you can see in this both bearings. You can see a bearing up here towards the nose of the quill. It's right there, okay, and... Uh, uh, and then you can see another bearing right here, back a little bit from it. We went to this uh, we went to this two bearing quill in the 1980s, and it works a whole lot better. Uh, if you if uh, you have a one bearing quill, the maximum run out on a one bearing quill is about five thousandths. In other words, the drill bit mounted in your in your um, uh, on your chuck will out the end of the quill will describe a circle that's about five thousand has five thousandths radius. Okay, if you have a two bearing quill that goes down to to one thousand. So the circle is much smaller, makes it much easier for you to uh, hit your dot. So to find out whether you've got a one bearing or a two bearing quill, you can either cut a slot in the side of your quill, like I've done here, or you can take your Allen wrench and insert it in here and feel. There's the Allen wrench. Okay, it's butting up against the uh, against the bearing. 
Okay? Uh, I'm going to butt that up, and I'm going to take a reading on it with my thumb. There you go. It's about six inches. Okay? If you insert the Allen wrench and it's... Um, uh, and, it, and it bottoms out at six inches, you've got a two-bearing quill. On the other hand, if you insert the Allen wrench and it goes all the, almost all the way down to the, uh, to the red part of the handle, okay, then you've got, then you've got a, uh, a one-bearing quill, and you may want to think about replacing that. All right. Got the quill out. We've established that we have a two-bearing quill. This quill doesn't need, it's uh, spinning pretty nice. There's uh, no bearings that need to be replaced there. It, by the way, if you, if you do need to replace a bearing, um, you can either buy a, a quill from us, um, the whole assembly, and replace that, or uh, uh, this comes apart relatively easily. You can take this to a machine shop and have the bearings pressed, uh, new, pressed off or on, put new bearings in. They're just standard, standard bearings. You can, um, you can uh, match them at, um, through most machine shops, or you can go to a place called Motion Industries, and they'll order these bearings for you. Um, let, me, let me get the wax out here. The quill should be lubricated from time to time with, uh, by putting some wax on the outside surface. Just a light coating is all that it needs. Try not to, to get very much in the, um, in the rack, the teeth there, and then buff it out. Okay? You don't want any excess wax in here because uh, the wax mixes with, um, with sawdust and uh, creates acupunky. Um, the take a wire brush and brush out the teeth to make sure that there's no wax in there. Now you may also have um, have uh, need to clean the pinion gear, which is inside here. Drew's going to come in in place on this in, the, in a minute. You can see that pinion gear. See that see that gear move? Okay. Now that creates uh, that sometimes uh, uh, collects sawdust. It gets impacted in there, and you have to you have to brush it out. And once again, you can just use a uh, a wire brush, and you put it in here, and you roll it back and forth. At the same time, you're turning the gear, okay, so that you get all of the sawdust from from in the, from uh, in there. Okay, got that? Okay. When the pinion gear, of course you. Can't. <laughs> you 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 can't blow down 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 through there. Of course, unless you've got a slot in your in your headstock. But uh, but once you've got that once you've got that clean, it's time to put this uh, this thing back together. Uh, all right, re to retension the um, the headstock. All you do is wind this one, two, uh, three times. Insert the quill with the rack down. Let it engage, and then let it retract. Okay, last thing. You've got to tighten this screw on the top here. Uh, the screw actually fits in this groove that you see right here so that uh, it keeps the uh, rack from turning. You know, right now the, the screw is loose, and see that, that rack will float back and forth in there. Um, it may become hung up. So, so t take the screw and tighten it in the bottom of the slot so that it actually holds the quill out from the headstock. Now, go back and loosen it very slowly until that happens. And there, that's what you want, right there. And that's it. That's the, that's the quill extracted and the quill retracted. Uh, so, um, not much, not much uh, uh, to that. Uh, but uh, if you if you really clean, keep this thing clean, this works a lot better.